Hello everyone. Today's topic for D2L Fusion 2023 is bulk user management, BAM enrollment files in Brightspace automation using Brightspace APIs. Myself is Anuja, Kukarni software developer here in Southern New Hampshire University. My contact is a.kukarni at snhu.edu. If you have any questions, feel free to reach me after this presentation. Today's agenda is introduction. First, explaining what is a topic for, then the challenge, explaining what is a challenge. Third one is solution, how to overcome this challenge. And fourth one is results. What results have we achieved at the end? And fifth one is lessons learned. So let me start with the introduction of this topic. In the Brightspace learning environment, we SNOW were unable to determine when cascading enrollment completes. This presents an operational gap. The solution for this unknown, we SNU built an app leveraging Brightspace APIs. This custom app was designed and implemented to augment the existing capabilities of Brightspace for SNU's operational needs. So here is a high-level organic structure inside SNU. Top level organet is university and other child organet cascades down from the university organet. So as you can see here, semesters or term, program is optional, department uh, is nothing but subject, course template, course offering, course groups and course sections. So course offering must have at least one template parent. Department semester and programs can only have root as the parent. There must be at least one department as child of root. Sections and groups can only be children of course offerings. Templates can only be children of semesters, departments or programs. So. In this case, what is a cascading role? If a role is cascading, a user enrolled in any org unit in that role is automatically enrolled into all other org units beneath it. For example, if you enroll a user in the history department in a cascading role, the user is automatically enrolled in all course template, course offering and groups and sections under that department. So here we are facing the challenge. As new skills require the processing of several enrollments per day in the Brightspace learning environment, there is no way to determine when cascading enrollment complete as organic structure is very large. Cascading enrollment basically overrides current users enrollments that they had in any other org units. So this presents an operational gap. So here is a solution we came on to. Brightspace has a bulk enrollment option which processes CSV file and which is considered as a manual option. In order to overcome this challenge, we process CSV file data and it will overcome a process gap in the existing Brightspace functionality as below. So we send the BUM enrollment files, which is uh, holding the non-cascading role username and the org unit code through API call. This app refreshes the token uh, with the OAuth app registered in the Brightspace. Rerun the enrollment files containing these non-cascading roles such as student, faculty or instructor, user and org unit information multiple times on an hourly basis in a day to make sure those corrections or enrollments stick inside against that user. So the CSV file I was mentioning uh, has certain 
pattern it needs to follow. So all fields must be separated by commas and all record must occur on a separate line. So this is a D2L uh, file format. If since I'm enrolling the user, I need to have a enroll as a uh, action item. And the required fields are username, role name, and org unit code. Those all are starts with star. Org define ID is optional. You can assign and remove user from role that you have permissions to change. In this scenario, enrollment action is used to enroll an existing user in a specified org unit. So this is a file format for that particular action. So this is a quick flowchart I made to show how this process works. Basically, the app gets the input CSV file, which has records for the enrollment, which includes the action, uh, then username, role name, and org unit code. So program basically makes sure the access token is valid. If not, it gets the new token from the bright space. If the access token is valid, it makes three different API calls. The first call is to get the user ID from username. The second call is to get the role ID from the role name and the third call is to get the org unit ID from the given org unit. If all these three things found in the bright space, I make the post enrollment action into the bright space and I can see that enrollment has been made into the bright space. I get a success code back and I, I write each record by record in the log file. If in any one of these three API call fail, I consider it as a failed record and append it to the different Excel spreadsheet as a failed record. So at the end of the process, uh, there is an email sent out, including the attachment of log file as well as the failed records. If there are any failed records. So here is a quick snap of the how the API calls uh, look for this app. So these are the call, uh, APIs I have used against price space. So enrollments, uh, which is create as a scope. The second one is organization read to make sure the org unit code exists. Third one is role to see if the role um, name exists. Fourth one is user getting the user ID from the username. And the last one is making sure the API is working and there is no forbidden error and the access token is valid or not. So this one is a example where I use the D2L API call where it, the action here is post, which basically create or update a new enrollment for a user. In this case, you pass in create enrollment data as a JSON body format, and then you uh, get the status code back, either 200, which is success, or forbidden, which means you don't have a permission to create the enrollment. And there are certain API versions. So the most recent one is 1.42 uh, for this LP I have used. And so the return, once you post the enrollment, you get the JSON block back for the newly enrolled user. And if it is for this different role, then this action updates the user into the updated role. So for making a successful API call for the post action, this is a roles and permission is needed uh, for the 
a OAuth app. So under Organity Editor, we have a permission. Basically, if I we set that on, then the post action is successful. So here is how you post the enrollments in Brightspace. The API call syntax has a Brightspace domain as a URL in the beginning, which is nothing but your school address on Brightspace as a URL. And then you add D2L API LP version syntax after that. LP version is nothing but the recent one, 1 1.42. Scope is enrollment and the JSON syntax has action of post. Uh, it has three variables most widely used organic ID, user ID, and role ID. And is cascading is a Boolean variable, which is considered as a false in this enroll action. So these are the three sample BOM enrollment files data for correction. So these three uh, are CSV file and has an action as enroll username then there is an optional field as arctifine id it's not necessary to provide it just uh, you can have a empty that value Fa uh, then faculty or any non-cascading role and then the org unit code at the end so you can process multiple bomb enrollment files at a time sample log file looks like this so you make an API call and then get the authorized token data. And then if it gets the success, then it goes further to read through those CSV file. And it starts reading one record at a time. Um, so it starts posting enrollment for line number one, success, uh, same student, but different organic code. This enrollment is success. and Again, same thing for third test score score. Once it's processed, it, it identifies how many records are successful, how many records are failed, and how many rows processed. So after this, it moves the uh, that particular file to Outbox folder. And this is the second file. It does the same thing uh, for the second file so you can pass multiple files in the input location where it processes all the files and finally it then spits out the log file and, and uh, if there are any failed records and then emails to the LMS group So what I learned things to know here, if the call is for same or existing org unit ID or user ID and role ID, D2L system just throw the success as a response message because it doesn't match any other API return codes. So response code 200 is returned with the correct enrollment JSON and no update is done to the enrollment table. And this is expected behavior per D2L. So if there is a different role, then it updates that role, but otherwise uh, it doesn't update the enrollment table. So here is the sum of the response code uh, I get usually while doing the API call. So 200 is nothing but OK or success code. Service returns an empty response body or a JSON data block if there is a success uh, response code back. If there is an invalid parameter or you have a, a bad JSON input data, then it gets uh, you back as a bad request response code. If you have an invalid token or um, you don't have a permission to make certain API call, then you get a forbidden message. And then there is a not found. And if you're sending too many requests, uh, 
which is not allowed in your API calling rate, then it basically exceeds your API rate limit. Then you will get a 429 message back. Otherwise, if there is a general service error, uh, then you will get a 500 as a response code back. Finally, here are the results I achieved. This scheduler app built for rerunning the BUM enrollment files multiple times in a day. So we run this BUM enrollment file multiple times to ensure enrollments inside file post overtly and enrollments stick with it and cascading enrollment doesn't have any effect on it. So this app enrolls users in corresponding org unit. This app creates a logic of creating enrollments through API call and can process multiple files at a time. It creates logs. It filters out any unprocessed record. It creates an error file for storing and tracking of all those unprocessed records. Additionally, this app emails the log file to LMS group and attaches error record Excel file. This app consumes basically OAuth app and its tokens and then renews it automatically when it expires. After navigating to Brightspace, we see bulk enrollment posted from file to Brightspace. Users get enrolled in the courses as defined, token is maintained on the server, which the app can consume when it runs next time. So now how do you test it? From the admin tool menu, you need to go to the user tracking, click users. On the users page, click the context menu of the user you want to edit. To view past enrollment changes for a user, uh, you can see the view user enrollment log or current log. Lessons learned. So we made use of Valence APIs within the Brightspace and achieved our goal for posting enrollment as well as managing token through OAuth app call. The Valence APIs have enabled SNU to automate the posting of enrollments, eliminating all manual efforts. Multiple files can be processed using given file instructions and automating enrollments happens in Brightspace. Now let's talk about time savings. So development time is two weeks. 5,000 enrollments created in three minutes. Automatically reposting this enrollment 11 times throughout the day. We can send multiple files data. It saved all manual efforts. Thank you for your time today. For listening my presentation please feel free to contact me if you have any questions after this thank you again